we will receive a brief from the Minister of Public Infrastructure, Honorable David Patterson, and he has with him the Minister within the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, Honorable Annette Ferguson, and the Minister of Communities, Ronald Bolkan. I would advise you that we are under time constraint. This briefing will last for 30 minutes, uh, and then proceed, I think, to a site visit. So I'm asking that you keep your, your questions concise, and we make full use of the time. And I'll ask the minister to address you. Um, this morning, I just would like to update the media and as well as the country um, as to the developments at the Durban Park Development um, Project Phase 1. Um, I, I, I want to, to embark on that. There's been, there seems to have been a lot of media um, attention on this project. Um, uh, unfortunately, what I have, um, the direction which the media has taken seems to be one in which um, it's saying that there is some yanking of a project or not. I'd like to correct that um, notion first and foremost. Um, what is my, my taking, the ministry taking the lead role now in the project is a accumulation of several um, activities. The administration has previously, as you probably know, um, worked a model which would have been for the opening of the, um, the arch as well as the inauguration in 2006, which was a private-public partnership. And, um, and we uh, continued that model with the Durban Park development. However, um, obviously, um, there are some constraints in that. The primary one being the mobilization of resources, etc. Um, it is a national project. It is for the um, nation. The Jubilee celebration is not a singular activity. It is a, um, a, a activity which should be celebrated by all Guyanese, our 50th anniversary. Um, and at this stage, because of time constraints um, and mobilization of equipment and resources, it was felt that it is better handled now under the ministry which has the resources to so do. Um, as you know, it, is a, um, it will be a push um, because um, there are two things since I've assumed the office, myself and Minister Arjun. Fair at, at the most, one is the rain and the floods. Um, we've somewhat tackled that. So that is, but, but obviously from, uh, from this morning you can probably see that will be our major challenge. Um, there have been some comments um, on in the media uh, uh, about um, safety, workmanship, and um, et cetera. All of that will be addressed um, in time for the Jubilee celebrations. Um, we have, I have, um, and my team, we would have examined the site. We would have met all the, um, the persons, and, and there's an orderly handover. Um, we've developed a plan, which I uh, will well, ask, ask the chief works officer to present to you shortly. Um, and I will address the other burning issues. I mean, obviously, now that it is a national project, it falls under the ministry um, budget. So obviously there are um, requirements on MPTAB. All of those will be re observed. So I'm just preempting some of the questions from my good friend, Mr. Adam Harris. He's smiling because, you know, I, 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 I do. Um, they, they are, and, and I will say this, um, funding, obviously, on the initial stage, um, it is on the line item from our Ministry um, Infrastructure Development. That's the correct line item, I'm just making sure. Um, obviously, but there, but there are alternatives, um, including um, but has not been con uh, concluded, um, a, a grant funding, which is um, already earmarked for such um, type of developments. Um, I will obviously, um, when you do ask the questions, I mean, uh, cabinet has made, I will tell you, preempt you as well. Um, my good friends from Guyana Times, um, I will preempt you to say that how the cabinet has made available um, the sum under this line item, existing line item is not a contingency sum. So, um, I can expend as much as $150 million. However, um, at this initial stage, obviously we have, um, we, we do have 
um, to get this finished um, before. So there would not be any um, need for a contingency at the moment. So please don't ask the same question back again. Um, obviously, with the, with, with the grant funding which is available, which was um, previously sought, which I am now tasked with ensuring comes to fruition, um, it can be as a possibility uh, fully funded the, the, the remainder of the works. Um, I think that is um, all I would give for the opening statement, and I'll take your questions. I'll ask the Chief Work Officer, Mr. Jeffrey Vaughan, to do a presentation how we do anticipate completing the project. Permit me this morning basically to present to you the methodologies that will be used in terms of completing the Durban Park Development Project for our 50th anniversary. Um, the first slide basically just give you an overview of the presentation. Um, is there somebody making the right? Right. This is a general layout of the site at present. Um, I do hope you can find your bearings. Where is north? Where is south? Um, where we have the parking lot, which is the bigger portion that you're seeing there, right? That is on your eastern end of the Durban Park. And that basically is one of the areas in which we would have our general parking. So we'll have to look at that. Um, obliquely opposite that, which is on your western end, is where we'll have our VIP. This is across the other side. The VIP and the parking. And in the middle of that, as you would notice, that's the tarmac area for the various activities. And to the right and left of that would have been our bleaches or the stand that should be used for the activities as they move along. I want you to keep in mind this layout as we move along because I'll be using this layout to analyze what will happen as we proceed. Next slide, please. Right. This is the scope of the outstanding works remaining at the Durban Park. Roofing and remedial works for spectators bleachers. The completion of the superstructure walls and roof for the VIP stand. Electrical wiring, lighting, and power supply. Access driveways and bridges. Sanitary facilities and drainage works. So these are the six major items that remains to be completed for the Durban Park project to be one that is of use for the 26th anniversary, 26th of May anniversary, right? What we intend to do is our completion time that we're looking at is 21 days. I know it's pretty tight. Um, our approach basically is multiple and simultaneous work activities. So you will see in the next few days, quite a number of contractors will be mobilized on site along with the ministry staff trying to put this together. We will have double shift. So you'll have one set of workers during the day, which is the first eight hour, and then we intend to have a second shift in the evening. Moving along. Right, first thing we need to look at is the completion of our bleachers. Um, you have a view of what the bleachers looks like. Um, that's on your right hand side there. And the last photo shows you, gives you a brief snapshot of what the stand should look like on completion. Um, the scope of works for the bleachers basically after inspection would have been for us to have the replacement of the damaged members. Um, these are basically columns, beams, and also decking. From our inspection for the few days gone by, um, we would have noticed that we need to have some changes in terms of um, remedial works to be done. Then we will have the installation of the additional structural members, and that's basically to strengthen the ability for these stands to enable to carry the loads that they will have to carry. So we will be doing some added strengthening to the structures that exist out there. And we'll also be installing the roof and um, time permit, we will have the guttering 
but the guttering is not so important at this stage for the bleachers. The most important thing is ensuring that it is structurally sound, so when anyone would have been using it, we would be able to have a proper bearing capacity and no stands collapsing. In terms of that, what we intend to do, the total number of stands out there at present is approximately 27. We intend to use four sets of contractors on those stands. It's seven per contractor. You may see the numbers increasing. It may be five because they are approximately three and two, five unfinished stands, which needs more work. So we may have to add two additional contractors to the four that we have present to ensure that we're able to complete. As I said earlier, it's a double shift and the duration is set at the 21 days and our start date should be from today, which is the 21st of April and our last, latest finish date should be May 12th. Um, the 15th is our cutoff, but we're using, giving ourselves a lead time of about three days. So once we finish on the 12th, um, the three days basically is to tidy up and to have the other decorative works done by the remaining people. Next slide, please. Right, so this is just the timelines that we have proposed to do the stands. Moving on. Right, then the completion of the VIP stand. Um, well, you know the VIP stand is one of the important ones that we have to look at. All others are important too, but this one, you know, you'll have all your other foreign delegates and what's not. So we are particularly interested in ensuring that we have some soundness to what is happening there. Um, the ground floor of the VIP basically will accommodate the TV and sound room. Um, the level one, as you go to the first level, um, we're supposed to have the sanitary blocks and the washroom facilities. That would be behind the, um, so the VIP, as you see there. They have just completed, I think, putting down the foundation when we were there yesterday. So we're hoping that we can start the concrete works coming up so that we can complete that. In terms of level two, um, the insulation of the flooring and the upper column, um, we have already, from the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, We've already contacted most of the um, contractors. Um, we should be meeting with those contractors later today to finalize the method that would be used in terms of having them employed by the ministry to complete these works. And then you have the other aspect which has to be completed for the VIP, which would be the roofing and the guttering. Um, the VIP stage basically is a 140. You see we have the measurement there. Those are the footprints that we have in terms of works to be done. Um, we intend to use two contractors, um, one on the ground floor, which would be finishing off the mortarless blocks that will be used to complete the ground floor, and the other would be used to complete the upper floor with the roofing. Um, that person have already been contacted, so hopefully we should meet them after this meeting to finalize discussion. The same timelines are used, as we said earlier in the previous slides. It's multiple contract, multiple works, and they will all be done simultaneously. So our times won't change. It's the same 21 days that we're looking at throughout. Um, our roofing design basically would be a slight similar to what you're seeing there, but they're some amount of modification we may make to the roof to ensure that we bring the project in, um, in on time because you have to be careful in terms of some of the construction. The architect will draw, but then you have to execute. So with the time we're having, we may have to do some relooking at the roofing design. Next slide, please. These are the timelines. Next slide. Good. The tarmac area, well, in terms of the tarmac, that would be solely taken care of by the Ministry of Public Infrastructure Special Projects Unit. Um, they basically will be putting down the crusher run for the tarmac area. They will be completing the paving for the VIP area. 
and also paving for other areas that will need pavements for access towards various activities that will be taking place on the tarmac. Um, we intend to utilize our mobile asphalt plant and also to utilize the asphalt plant at the Garden of Eden. So we'll have two sets of um, asphalt being produced at the same time. While we're producing asphalt right on site with our mobile plant, we will also have our stationary asphalt plant at Garden of Eden, also pumping up asphalt at the same time. So we'll be able to pull it in within the time that we're looking at. Next slide. Right, these are the electrical works where you know this is the main man in terms of us having the activity on the 25th of May, which is the flag raising. We must ensure that the lights are there. So we have some cables and stands um, and general facilities that needs to have um, lighting and the cables. So what we have to do, we'll have to still procure transformer and we'll have to ensure that the backup supplies and the backup power is installed at the same time. And the duration of this is three weeks. We are in contact presently with MACORP and others to see how we can work out arrangements to ensure that we bring these works in on time. Next. All right, the drainage works basically, this will entail the cleaning and clearing of the drainage systems in and around the Durban Park area. Um, we will have to do some procurement of tubes for the widening of some of the project areas that needs to widen so that you can have easy access driving in during the mash the celebration and creating of internal drains to keep off the water. Because basically, if we don't if we're not able to complete the roofing in terms of putting on the guttering, we will have to ensure that the internal drainage system is working so that the water would quickly subside as the rain falls. And this also would be within the period of three weeks. So in total, this is what we're looking at in terms of works that needs to be completed before the 26th of May. Thank you. Some additional information um, which I omitted to mention that um, this is a collaboration not only between the um, Ministry of Public Infrastructure with the Ministry of Communities, as you saw the last slide, the drainage um, that will be done by the Mayor and City Council under the guidance with, with the assistance of the uh, Ministry of Communities. And, um, and obviously the drainage is not only the site, you know tell that we have a culvert coming from Persingen Road to Home Stretch Persingen Road and there's one from um, by the 1763 Monument to Hatfield, Hatfield Street and that will be done um, under the, the direction and supervision. So it, it, it's, it's a collaborative effort and obviously the Ministry of Education under whom the uh, and the Ministry of Public um, Telecommunication and, and Tourism the actual event are um, part of the entire um, project team. So we've all met and decided and, 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 uh, and have handover dates. Um, Mr. Archer? Questions. Questions, okay. A quick one, sir. One of the big problems we always tend to have is manpower. Now that's a lot of work. Do we have the manpower on the ground available to these contractors to undertake all that you've outlined there? Yes, we, we, we do feel so. That is why we um, split it up. That's why we have not um, given any one um, contractor. And, um, and it's one of those things which I thought you would have been happy about, employment, creation of employment. So therefore, obviously, um, there's an opportunity for not only us to celebrate um, our jubilee, but some, I hope, able-bodied young men and women to also join in on that particular date. Ms. Minister, um, apologies for stepping into your press conference a bit late. Oh, you. Um, how much uh, are we talking about in terms of uh, the spending, just to be sure, to <laughs> make sure that this project is completed on time? Yes. Yes. Yeah, or, or I, I, I just say it. So, I mean, obviously, you, you came in late. I, knew, I anticipated this year. So, um, we've, we've uh, underlined item 
um, within the Ministry of one hundred of uh, fifty million dollars. But I also say that uh, we are in discussion. I do hope that it will be resolved quickly. The possibility of a grant funding, which will ob obviously um, defray those costs. Yeah. Can nice I be so intrusive as to ask one other question? Um, yes, I mean, I'm, I will answer any as many questions as time permits. That's the only constraint. Well, yes. oh. Mr. Minister, um, just checking, yeah, we know that you got donations and so on before to uh, take the project to where it is at present, the location mm -hmm. where it is at present. How much are we talking about? And is it possible you can give us the names of some of the people who would have uh, spent monies on making sure that the location is at the spot that it is at present? Um, that, that what we've received is a, a, a summary. What we're doing now is having an inventory of the materials um, thing. But there are two distinct um, sections. As, as you obviously, as you came in late, you, um, you, you missed the first part when I, saying, when I explained how there's a model which we had, which we, we tried, um, which we operated twice before on this third occasion um, at this stage from the, well, should I say Tuesday, when cabinet uh, officially, to the completion. Um, that is the remit under my ministry, along with communities and the rest. So there are two different phases. Obviously, I, I do think that, though that I know that there is a accounting process for the phase one, which we attempted to do, but we did not complete. As Mr. Hart is saying um, manpower. So there will be a reconciliation of both faces in due course. Minister Patterson, Dinesh from the Starbuck News. Uh, could you tell us who the contractors are? Um, what, what we did, the, the, the contractors uh, have me a second. We have, a, as you know, that we pre qualified contractors at the beginning of year, beginning of our procurement cycle. So we would have pre qualified previous to this, this on, um, unrelated to the Durban Park development. So we would have had a list of pre-qualified selectors, um, contractors, my apologies. Um, and we would have selected, I think, 13 or 15, because we need seven, but we would have select 13, 15, and ask them to submit. So therefore, that is the mean. So they've not, they have not been pre-selected. They obviously have to, one, show the capacity that they can do it, the manpower issue, as well as having have some sort of um, financial um, capabilities because double shifts um, is um, it's double the, the normal um, p wage bill at the end of the week. And it's a, it's a, it's a um, high intensity construction period. So therefore, the seven that best meets those qualifications from our pre-qualified list will be selected. Uh, not a question. Where exactly do the materials come from and at what cost, if you can... Um, the, the, the materials, are, from what I understand, were, has been donated from um, t from um, sawmills and those things like that. But I want to make a, a clear distinction here, right? That that is the infantry that we are going to be collecting. We are going to ins be inspecting them, and obviously going forward, um, there is a the EMPTAB regulations which we will address moving forward. Um, but as I, as I, the same question that the, that the young man asked in front there. There's two distinct phases. Both will be subject to audits and um, public scrutiny, but I am addressing completion of the project. One last question. Who was in charge of the project before? There was a team, I, I think, headed by um, Corn London, and the same um, team that would have been looking at public spaces beforehand um, it, in collaboration, and they were looking at it, and they're still involved. And, that's what, and that, I mean, I hope you were here from the beginning, so I don't want to be repeating myself. Um, this is not a breakage of anything like that. It's a question of mobilization of um, additional resources. Capacity of the stands, 27 stands, how many people do you think will fit in there? Ah, no, that's a good question. They are supposed to take, I think, 700, no, five, right? Um, per, stand. per stand, right? Obviously, and I want to address that um, here. You know I mean? I have with me my engineers so when we go on site and I, I, I'm absolutely um, confident in them because obviously we all take um, I mean the work that they do for granted every day we drive over a bridge that they would have designed the road which they would have designed um, we go on um, stellings and wharfs which they would have designed and constructed so I have complete faith in them um, they have already started the process of checking each and every stand from 
mean, very systematically. It was started before we completing it. Um, and I, uh, um, we will test the stands pre um, prior to um, open it up to the, to, to the public. Um, and just in case, and we'll ask the, um, we, as you know, there are persons drilling there, so we just ask them to, to sit on the stand and then give us a maximum wave or so. And um, for Ghana Times, they do have an option, the soldiers, so they don't want you to say it out that we ordering them, they can say no. Um, but obviously, um, you know, ob obviously I do hope it out they will not. We already have the, the timber, the plywoods and those things like that. So basically what, is, what, what will happen is on the VIP stand, there will be plywoods on top of the tiered sections. And then we'd have, as Mr. Vaughan explained, a steel fabricated roof which will be fabricated down and just lifted, erected on, on top of the, um, <laughs> oh, right, there you go. Long, yes, fabricated and erected onto the, um, on, on top of that. Um, so lightweight, quick construction, we put in the gutters. Um, under here is the, Mr. London, this is this where the ladies is, is standing, that's the um, security. And, and the TV room. And TV rooms, so, so, so there will be a section over there, um, here for security, a section over the other side. The laboratories will be going at the back. Um, we are going to the the force account guys will starting, I think on Friday tomorrow start with the crusher run on top here to to bring to, to bring the level up so that we can um, do it. Uh, and obviously we set up our mobile actual plant as far as east? East, east east as possible so that we don't um, inconvenience any work. I mean, and, and, and the mobile astral plant, you know, as you know, is a natural plant. You will probably see it. We used it in Linden last year. And what they'll do is just um, 24 hours, just um, pump out the asphalt, concrete, and we, we'll pave where it is. The tarmac itself will not be paved, it'll be leveled. So don't, don't let us um, think that it will be leveled with crusher run and those things like that and sealed. There's a little a sealant, so therefore the dust will not, there will be no dust raising when the um, during the performances by the, um, the the various RTs, which would be the Army and the cultural events by the Ministry of Education. And obviously, and what we're doing, if, if you well, we probably could start show you from the stands. You can see it is like one, two, three, seven stands. So you give somebody the first seven. One contractor, the second contractor, or the first five, one, two, three, four, five, the second contractor, one, two, three, four, five, and that's the way in which we, we, we are going. So obviously they'll just simply concentrate on getting those done. They'll put their materials right in front of the stand. Um, as you can see some there now, and they will just concentrate on those stands alone. Um, obviously um, behind us there is the VIP car park that will be fully paved. That uh, of course is the least of our um, issues. We pave, as you probably recognize, we pave at a great rate because we've been doing that at the moment. Um, there is work by, by the mid next week, the work around the, the flagpole, there's some body, um, terrazzo and completion that will be finished by next week, Wednesday, I think, or Tuesday or Wednesday. That's the first set of work we want to do. We want to get, uh, get, get rid of any of the um, fine work, as they say for us, and then obviously the rest is bodies. Um, I think it's permanent, right? Pardon? Yeah, the I think the lights we have up here now. Well, yeah, the, lights work. The, the lights work, the lights will probably, we'll probably um, in phase two um, green it up a little bit more. If you, if, if you um, say we may green, green them up a little bit more, put on a, um, yeah, so, uh, power them green by green, but right now they're powered by brown um, energy, so <laughs> um, obviously we don't, so we are going, um, we are going to have a green economy and those things. So that'll be the only variation with the, with the lights, but that's not in this phase. Um, so don't uh, address that. Um, no, 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 no. Thank you very much. Yes, we we are talking about the power, green, clean energy. So, 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 um, and it wouldn't be green and yellow. While you, while it's unfortunate, it rained today, but you know, that 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 when you compact in sand, you you, you throw water on it. So therefore, obviously, some areas we may take up back to put in another layer crusher run. So I don't want you reporting that the send that the site is flooding or sinking or so forth. Because I know already people will want to have a retrograde sort of thing. But but that, that is not a problem. Um, we haven't finished the leveling in the sense of, you know, I mean obviously what will happen is will we will level from probably the center of the tarmac going back up. Mr. Vaughan mentioned um, drainage. So therefore it will drain towards the 
um, perimeter. So therefore that will be done. And that is, that is just purely um, the easiest part, dumping, unrolling, crusher run, and whatever. So um, right, so the waterlog issues will be, that will be, um, that's the easiest part for us to fix.